When Bungie made modding our gear free of charge, that enabled third-party extensions and tools to let us save mod loadouts in our gear, which is incredibly handy if you bother with multiple mod builds like I do, or you just find yourself messing with mod combinations but then forgetting what you originally started with. Today, I wanna to talk about some mod combinations and mod loadouts that I think the average player should probably have on speed dial. That being said, when I started writing this video, I kind of realized that there's not that much complexity when it comes to mod loadouts, at least when it comes to charged with light mods, which is mainly what we'll be covering. A lot of mod builds are straight up just gonna be taking charge plus a charge consumption mod related to the weapon that you're using with any other mods that might supplement the build of which there are not really that many. If you're well in tune with the game, a lot of this information is probably going to be old news, but if you're someone who hasn't really explored the world of mods, or you tend to ignore them, or you just think they're very overwhelming, you're probably going to learn something here. Warmind Cell mods are not really super popular at the moment due to their nerfs a while ago, and because the weapons you need to use in order to get them to pop out aren't exactly the strongest. You're also limited by anti-champion mods season over season, further increasing the limitations. We discussed Elemental Well mods in a previous video and ultimately came to the conclusion that while the stasis-based mods are pretty good, at least a couple of them, there isn't a ton going on there otherwise other than Font of Might and maybe a couple of Arc mods. That's not to say that they're all bad, but they're not necessarily mods that I think the average player needs to worry a whole lot about. Before we begin, to even get mods, let's say you're a returning player or you're a new player, you need mod components. Mod components are earned from doing Banshee bounties. The non-repeatable get you two, the repeatable gets you one. You should be doing these every day or most days. They're not very hard to do at all. Banshee and Ada1 sell mods and you should check them every day to see if you're missing something, especially Ada who sells the combat style mods. There's also a trick you can do if you're a returning player with some spare currency. Go to your collections tab, and if you played in year one, find stuff from year one, stuff that has a static roll on it. Reacquire said item, it could be the same one over and over, and then dismantle it. These have a decent chance of dropping mod components. If you're a new player, obviously you can't do this, or if you didn't play in year one, you can't do this, but if you're not new and you did play in year one, this is a good method, assuming you have the spare materials still lying around. If this gets patched out of the game, if you can't do it anymore, I'm sure it'll be noticeable pretty quickly. If you have any old spare mods in your inventory, stuff that's been deprecated, you can delete those for components as well. So for starters, let's talk about core mods. These are your finder mods, scavenger, defense, reload, class item mods, and finally stat mods. These are mods that should be going into your armor at almost all times. Regarding stat mods, these are very fluid because it ultimately depends on the purpose of the armor that you have equipped and the other mods that you have equipped. Are you running a melee build, a grenade build, a PvP build? The build will impact which of the stat mods will be equipped into your gear. A lot of the lower cost stat mods will enable you to equip more secondary mods or combat style mods, whereas higher cost stat mods will prevent some of that from happening. This kind of goes back to my original video on creating a build or optimizing your armor sets. Ideally, you will already have a couple of armor sets made with objectives in mind and you will have an idea of how you want to progress that armor set. I would highly advise making some sets first before diving into mods. Your most basic of basic armor mod setups will look something like this to start out with. In the helm slot, you're going to have a stat mod and two finder mods. Arms, you're going to have a stat mod, two reload speed mods, or anti-champion mods. Chest armor, you'll have a stat mod, two defense mods, and a combat style mod. Legs, you're going to have a stat mod and at least one scavenger mod. And in your class item, you're going to have a stat mod and likely an expensive seasonal mod. This is your core build. 
it doesn't really have any strengths. The build is basically just you using the energy that you have on your armor to make sure you at least have some mods in the armor that you're taking advantage of. For a lot of basic activities and even advanced activities like a normal mode raid, this is actually more than enough. Important to note that Master Grasp of Avarice, the dungeon, drops armor with an additional seasonal mod slot in it called Artifice Armor. While this doesn't increase the total energy capacity of that armor piece, it could provide a situation where you can use one or two unspent energy on a seasonal mod for a little bit of a boost. It's currently unknown if other master content or any content will provide artifice armor in the future. My guess would be yes, but we don't know for certain. In stuff like the strike playlist, you don't really need anything more than this core loadout. Even in seasonal activities, you really don't. In my opinion, it's not worth stressing yourself out over trying to make your super high powered build work in low level content if the only way you're able to make it work is to try your absolute hardest in content that doesn't really need that much effort whatsoever. There are some more passive builds you can make work, like an energy converter build that we'll talk about, but generally speaking, unless you really want to be tryharding in the strike playlist or a seasonal activity, using that core mod setup is going to be more than enough. In fact, it may even be a detriment trying to run more intricate loadouts and builds in certain activities. The main way to figure out what builds are going to work where is simply practicing and getting experience with them. Not all solo builds will work well in group content and vice versa. In PvP, we're swapping finder mods for targeting mods, defense mods in your chest piece for unflinching, and the seasonal mod in the class item will be swapped for whatever your preference is. Not a lot of people bother with combat style mods in PvP, although high energy fire does make some appearances here and there. Overall though, most people tend to focus on stats and gun mods as PvP combat is a much different experience than PvE combat. And by much different, I mean you don't have nearly the same amount of freedoms. When you want to start incorporating combat style mods into your armor for PvE, the first mods that you'll likely be getting rid of or downgrading are stat mods or reload speed mods. Reload speed bonuses are found in a lot of different places and you can generally live without them. Stat mods are good, but it's usually worth trading some stats for combat style mods that enhance your gameplay to a large degree. Defense mods in your chest armor can also be put on the sidelines in easier content, but considering how cheap they are, you'll usually be able to keep them around. As a result, your chest armor tends to have the most amount of spare energy, which means you'll likely end up putting the most expensive mods in your chest armor. Only in the most extreme circumstances would I ever not want to have a scavenger mod, as they are incredibly powerful, although finder mods are a little bit weaker, and it's okay to live without those if you have a specific build that you want to run. The first mod setup is by far the most basic, and that is taking charge and high energy fire as your base. This loadout's idea is very simple. Use a masterworked weapon to get kills, and then pick up the orbs of power to create charged with light, and then use said charged with light via high energy fire. This happens all the time during gameplay, during all activities, and it provides a small bonus to your gunplay. You only lose stacks of charge with light when killing a target, so try to have a stack during a boss fight for some free extra damage. Otherwise, this is a build that does not really require a lot of action or thought. The best part is that you do not need any specific elemental affinity on any of your armor pieces. Both of these mods are available on any element of armor. Now, if you want to, you can also use one of the other various charge with light mods that give you charge when getting kills with certain kinds of weapons, usually multi-kills, to supplement taking charge. These mods include Sustained Charge, Solar, Blast Radius, Solar, Swift or Quick Charge, both Arc, Precisely Charged, or Precision Charge, both of those are Void. I would probably sway more towards the mods that work with primary weapons, but you can technically use any of them. You could also bolster this with mods that give you multiple stacks of charge when you get charge, 
or being able to hold more total charge to be able to keep dealing high amounts of damage for longer. I personally wouldn't go too overboard on that for this build though, as I don't think it's very necessary, but you could if you want. The opposite of this build would be taking charge and protective light, which requires a void armor piece for protective light. You're swapping out the offensive capabilities for defensive capabilities. I personally really enjoy protective light in higher level content because the boost in defense when it procs is so substantial that it will more often than not be able to get you out of a bad situation. Again, supplement this with other mods that give you charge. One that I like is empowered finisher since you're more likely to be using finishers in GMs to either proc certain effects or get free damage on a target. But it's also very easy to use on any target for a free stack of charge either way. Shield Break Charge is another very cheap and easy way to get charged, but it's obviously better in areas where there are a lot of shields to break. Another mod you could use might be Elemental Charge, which gives you charge stacks when you collect elemental wells. In Season 15, this, combined with the seasonal mod Fire and Ice, makes it very easy to get charged after champion kills, but in future seasons, you'll need something else to create elemental wells, which in GM content might be more annoying to make happen, unless you're running with a stasis build, perhaps with Agar Scepter, or if you're running with another mod that we'll mention in a little bit. I personally don't think you need more than Charged with Light times 2 with Protective Light since the buff lasts long enough for you to get to safety. Obviously, increasing the stacks is not a bad idea, but I don't think you need it unless you play very aggressively or you're not the greatest at avoiding danger. Something I don't really recommend is using multiple Charged with Light consuming mods like High Energy Fire and Protective Light at the same time. High energy fire will be eating up most of your charge most of the time, meaning you will likely not have charge when you need it to proc protective light. You could do something that is a bit more specialized though. For example, protective light and Argent Ordnance. You're not gonna be firing rockets nearly as often as you might just be shooting a gun. So using both in this case does make a bit more sense. You just need to monitor your stacks very closely, ensuring that you have charges ready for when you want to actually fire some rockets. Next, we have a sword focused build mentioned in the solo flawless Grasp of Avarice video, Lucent Blade, Arc, and Taking Charge being your base. Lucent Blade also has a secondary effect when you have another arc mod equipped in the same armor piece, and that does include raid mods, but it's only active if you're in the raid the mods are for, or if you have another arc charged with light mod in another piece of armor. And this is something you're definitely going to want to take advantage of. Most of the time, it's a very good idea to get the secondary effect of the mods that have this feature. When Passive Guard is available in a particular season in the Seasonal Artifact, you are very likely going to be using that as well due to the extreme defensive bonus that you get with it. In that video, I also mentioned adding in Supercharged, which is a solar mod, in order to increase the amount of stacks that you can hold, which lets you do said increased sword damage for longer. You can also grab Stacks on Stacks, Void, which makes it so you get two stacks instead of one whenever you get charged, making it easier to hit the cap sooner. You're going to be seeing stuff like Stacks on Stacks, Charged Up, and Supercharged tending to be the supplementary mods for builds that really want a lot of uptime. That being said, these mods require specific elements on your armor, which makes any future builds not as flexible unless you're willing to swap elements, which can be very expensive for a lot of players. I mentioned the arc mods with the secondary effects a minute ago, and I just wanted to bring up two mods in particular, Powerful Friends and Radiant Light. A lot of people treat these mods as a flat stat boost as opposed to the effects that they actually give due to their secondary effect. This is because you aren't actually benefiting from the mods. Other people in your team are. But if other people in your team don't have charge with light mods on, then they aren't really going to benefit at all. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with using these mods for stats, especially if your core build does not use a lot of mods, but it's just going to come down to if you need those stats. The nice thing about this is that you can wear both of these mods on different armor pieces, and they'll activate the secondary effect, which is the stats portion, of each other. The same concept from Lucent Blade can apply for Argent Ordnance as well, which is a solar mod. Argent Ordnance increases rocket damage and consumes a charge every single time you fire a rocket. Taking charge and one copy of Ordnance is fine for activities that don't really have players firing tons of rockets in a row. Important to note that Argent Ordnance and all other solar charged with light mods can stack multiple times, so equipping more copies gives you a greater damage bonus. In this case, it starts out at 20% and can go up to 35% with, I believe, three copies. However, this damage bonus does not stack with something like Well of Radiance or Ward of Dawn, so most of the time in a setting where you will have one of these buffs, you aren't going to need Argent Ordnance at all. If you're just out and about, or you don't have Ward or Well, then Argent Ordnance will be a much better idea, but stacking multiple copies can get very expensive in terms of energy, and it requires a lot of solar armor. A build that I've really enjoyed using that's a bit more specific, focused on getting many supers, is Energy Converter, Stacks on Stacks, Charged Up, Supercharged, and Taking Charge, or your choice of Charge Generator. With this build, you're able to get 5 stacks of charge while only needing to pick up 3 orbs of power. Then, after you use your super, you immediately throw a grenade and get half of your super back then repeat the process over and over again to enable a lot of super spam. If you have teammates also running this build, you'll be able to chain off of each other. However, this requires all five combat style slots to be used, and you need two void armor pieces and two solar armor pieces. It's also not a build I would run unless you are going to focus specifically on making this build work to its maximum potential which means you need to make sure you're able to throw a grenade every single time you use your super, which can be quite often. You could somewhat reasonably use this build in higher level content, but you and your team really need to focus on generating a lot of orbs of power, which sometimes isn't always feasible. Again though, we see that the core of most Charged with Light builds is simply a generator plus a consumer. The Energy Converter build uses that concept and then supplements it by getting more stacks. The same can be done with a sidearm build using Surprise Attack or the Argent Ordnance build mentioned earlier. Let's take a look at Elemental Well mods again real quick. In the video I did a few months ago, I took a look at Overcharge Wellmaker, Arc, and Elemental Charge as a base setup. A finisher would spawn two Arc Wells with Elemental Charge giving you two Charged with Light stacks. This is a very solid core because it allows you to get Charge times 2 basically on demand to do whatever you want with. It costs two mod slots instead of your traditional one, which would likely be used by taking charge, but you have a lot more control over when you can charge yourself and how often. And again, we can add to this core with Charged Up, Supercharged, and your choice of a Consumption mod, any of the ones that we just discussed will be fine. Font of Might is definitely a highlight mod within the Well family, but it just has a lot of conditions that it needs to hit. You need to pick up a Well that matches both your subclass element and weapon element. If you're running Overcharge Wellmaker, you need to be running an Arc subclass and an Arc weapon, for example. Font of Might is the most popular with Stasis, specifically the Agger's Scepter build that I discussed in another video, where you use Elemental Shards to turn Stasis Shards into Stasis Wells. That would be your core build, but the issue is that there aren't many Stasis weapons out there, the two most popular being Eyes Luna and Agger's Scepter, but both of these are very, very good. To bolster this core, you would then likely throw on Elemental Charge and High Energy Fire, resulting in some pretty significant weapon damage bonuses with a final slot left over. Most people would use Elemental Time Dilation to increase the duration of Font of Might. This is a very good build that can work in many activities, but it's a build that requires specific conditions and weapons to make work to its maximum. A lot of the other builds that we discussed have a bit more freedom. I think that about does it for some very basic builds. 
Again, to summarize this whole thing up, Taking Charge is going to be the most common charge generator mod, combined with stuff like High Energy Fire, Protective Light, Lucent Blade, Argent Ordnance, Surprise Attack, which I didn't even mention in the video, or other mods in order to activate your Charged with Light. Supercharged, Charged Up, and Stacks on Stacks can supplement your build to help you get more stacks and get them faster. Overcharge Wellmaker and Elemental Charge can replace Taking Charge or even work in tandem with it for more charging opportunities. Hopefully with these loadouts being able to be swapped to with a click of a button means that the modding experience is a bit less daunting to those of you who haven't really dabbled into mods before. If you have some basic builds that you would like to share in the comments, please feel free, or even some more advanced ones that you've enjoyed that maybe require a bit more specialization. Feel free to share it in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.